Even if you live under a rock, you've heard of SpongeBob SquarePants. With 250 episodes and counting, this cartoon juggernaut took Nickelodeon by storm in 1999 and has been incredibly popular ever since. Whether you're a super fan like me, or have never even seen a single episode, you're bound to know some of these facts about the famous Sponge. However, even the most diehard Sponge heads probably don't know about some of these obscure and even disturbing facts about the series. In this video, we're going to examine the SpongeBob SquarePants iceberg. If you're not familiar with how these iceberg charts work, let me give you a quick rundown. The tip of the iceberg contains some more common facts relating to the show, but as we dive deeper and deeper, we'll uncover the lesser known and weirder facts. At the bottom right of the screen, I'll include a gauge to show how familiar I am with each fact. Five delicious Krabby Patties means I'm incredibly confident I know what I'm talking about. And if there is only one Krabby Patty, then I have zero familiarity with the topic at hand. Now that you're familiar with the general concept, let's take a plunge into Bikini Bottom. Sponge Boy. This one is very common knowledge. The show's creator, Steven Hillenburg, originally named the titular character SpongeBob as Sponge Boy. However, he had to change it due to Sponge Boy being previously copyrighted by a pre existing sponge product. Nuclear Fallout. Bikini Bottom, the city that the show takes place in, actually owes its real life origins to the real life Bikini Atoll, a region in the Pacific Ocean. In the 1940s, this was a nuclear bomb testing site for the United Nations. Testing stopped shortly after it was realized that radiation from the drop bombs had noticeably affected the marine life in the region. Marine Biology Origins Before getting his start in the entertainment industry, Steven Hillenburg was actually a marine biologist located in Southern California. He began creating educational comics teaching basic marine biology facts, which eventually evolved into the show we now know and love. Patrick's Parents In the Season 2 episode, I'm with Stupid, it is revealed that Patrick has four parents breaking the norms of the nuclear family and applying his parents were swingers in the past. Because this episode aired in 2001, just one year prior to the Children's Media Act 2002, the showrunners were able to get away with this risque innuendo. Secret Formula Recipe In the Season 7 episode, The Great Patty Caper, it is revealed that the ingredients for the Krabby Patty secret formula are chum, flour, salt, barnacle shavings, and turmeric. While it does not specify how much of each ingredient is necessary to craft the delicious burger, I encourage any chefs at home to give it a shot. The Ugly Theory The popular phrase, I'm ugly and I'm proud, was shouted by Spongebob in the season 2 episode, Something Smells. This quote has been analyzed to have a double meaning that implies Spongebob is not actually ugly, but coming out as gay. The showrunners have actually deconfirmed this theory, but it is still nice to think that Spongebob is in fact an ally. Lifeless Denizens this is a direct quote from the IGN review of the 2020 game, Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. The reviewer described the game's NPCs to be, quote, lifeless denizens, unquote. This is definitely one of the more well-known facts about the franchise, and I'm not even sure why it mentions a merit on this list. Mr. Krabs' Accent Fans have long speculated the real-world origin of Mr. Krabs' very distinct accent. In a 2005 interview with the character's voice actor, Clancy Brown, all he had to say in response to the questioning of his origin was, it's not inspired by the native Pacific Islander tongue, but it's also not not based on that. Real Life Krabby Patty This is likely referencing an incident in 2011, in which a family-owned restaurant in Florida was sued by Viacom Entertainment for selling an item on their menu called the Krabby Patty? Either that, or this is just a reference to the realistic Krabby Patty depicted in Help Wanted, the pilot episode of the show. A Day with Spongebob A Day with Spongebob was a DVD once thought to be lost media. Very little information was known about it, but several Nickelodeon forum users had claimed to have seen it being sold in Walmarts from around 2008 to 2009. For years, little was known about it except for pictures of the DVD, featuring a picture of a boy posing in front of an inaccurate depiction of Spongebob's iconic pineapple. However, in 2017, 
a copy was finally uploaded online to the disappointment of fans, who discovered it was a fan-made DVD placed in stores and was not officially licensed. Imagination Lost Frame In the Season 3 episode, Idiot Box, the 108th frame is inexplicably missing from the episode. Later airings and DVD releases would fix this error. The frame itself is rather insignificant, but this is a pretty cool fact to know offhand in my opinion. Gold Doubloons Again, I'm not sure why this is on the list, as this is a very common piece of knowledge due to the memes that have spawned from it over the years. The Season 2 episode, Gary Takes a Bath, sees Spongebob trying to convince Gary to take the titular bath by offering him two bars of soap he calls Gold Doubloons. He then warns Gary not to drop them, which is a reference to how slippery soap bars can be when wet. Alarm Clock Malfunctions this refers to the alarm clock sold to go along with the Season 1 episode, Ripped Pants. I actually owned one of these as a child, and I can confirm that they are notorious for breaking after just a couple years. While mine stopped working when the batteries died, there are even some accounts of these making hypnotic, droning noises rather than the song it's supposed to produce. This is one of the most infamous accounts of planned obsolescence. Simpsons Bob In 2014, it was teased by the Simpsons showrunning staff that there would be a crossover episode titled Simpsons Bob. While many fans were both excited and concerned at first, this turned out to just be an elaborate April Fool's joke. The Perfect Run Although I am no longer a speedrunner myself, I am very invested in the speedrunning community. The Perfect Run refers to a 1 hour and 10 second completion of the Spongebob Squarepants movie game for the Game Boy Advance. It is theorized to be possible, but it has never been achieved in actuality. There is a $2,000 bounty out on achieving this world record time if you're interested in pursuing it, so start your engines. Pink. This alludes to the legendarily poor performance of the song We've Got Scurvy in the Spongebob extended episode Truth or Square. I'd rather not dwell on this one as it gives me secondhand embarrassment every time I think of it. Next, Camp Coral Beta. The up and coming spin-off show, Camp Coral, recently released an unpolished trailer on the official Nickelodeon Twitter. Fans mocked it and had a lot of backlash until showrunners stated that this was unfinished footage that was never meant to be seen by the public eye. It's an unfortunate start to what seems to be a very promising sequel show. Two Karens This is one of the few fan theories that has a lot of legitimacy towards it. In the first three seasons of the show, Karen looked like this, while from the movie onward, it has depicted her as this. Fans believe that the wall-mounted Karen, who was much more negative towards her husband Plankton, was dismantled and altered to become the more modern and mobile Karen, who was considerably more supportive of his schemes. My personal beliefs align with this theory, because hey, I can't blame Plankton for wanting a more submissive lifelong partner. Squidward's Suicide This is officially the first creepypasta to creep its way onto the chart. It's rather well known at this point, but Squidward's Suicide is a mostly deconfirmed myth about the showrunners being shocked as Squidward inexplicably committed suicide in an episode nobody even wrote or animated. It's full of hyper-realistic blood and graphic imagery, basically all the embarrassing aspects of a creepypasta, unless it's true. KCA Ballot Scandal this is most definitely talking about the 2007 Kids' Choice Awards Best Show of the Year being awarded to the Fairly Odd Parents. Many have speculated that this year's winner was rigged, but it could just be us sponge heads being sad we lost another chance at sweet, sweet victory. Ink Deficiency For whatever reason, Squidward has not been shown to ink in an episode since 2012. His last depicted inking was in the Season 9 episode, Krabby Come Down in which he inks so much it filled the entire screen leaving Spongebob and Pat gagging. Perhaps the network asked the showrunners to lessen the ink after this moment, or perhaps Squidward may have pulled something in the process and tore his ink sack. Hashtag Save Spongebob This was a popular hashtag that was constantly reposted on social media around 2014. It was rumored that the show was going to be cancelled and that spreading this message was the only way to prevent Nickelodeon from pulling the plug. This, of course, was never actually the case, and if you fell for it, you should be grounded. The Perfume Isle The Perfume Isle, which is a gag from the Season 2 episode Shanghai, actually has a very dark history behind it. The footage for the segment was shot in a Macy's department store, and in 2015, that very store was closed due to the substantially decreasing sales that particular location had. 
The Sandy Retcon. Episodes airing after season 10 have featured Sandy with a slightly more modest bikini under her deep sea suit. This has always felt disingenuous, as Sandy was known for being the perfect balance of brains and beauty. Fans of the show were left clamoring for a return to her previously skimpy swimwear. Larry and Pearl's Routine This is the first part of the chart that I am left completely clueless on. Not only do I have no idea what this is in reference to, but I can't find anything online either. Make sure to correct me in the comments because this one has totally gone over my head. Good god. Chapped Lips The fan favorite season 4 episode, Karate Island contains a very disturbing segment in which the character Lip Service suffers from ironically severe chapped lips. This was a major factor in the creation of the Spongebob fetish sub-fandom, and if you've never seen this side of the community, perhaps you're best to remain ignorant. Deep Trilogy the Deep Trilogy is the name of a cancelled series of three hour-long TV specials teased in early 2018. While little is known about the content of these episodes themselves, it apparently went through development before being ultimately scrapped. All that remains is the singular promotional image that was posted on the official Plankton Facebook fan page. Hostage Theory I unfortunately cannot talk about this one because my fan base is primarily children and this is a very adult topic. But needless to say, it's very interesting. Make sure to look this one up if you're at least 18 or being monitored by a legal guardian. This is where a majority of the list evolves into fan theories and unofficial facts. If this sort of thing uninterests you, feel free to click off, but if not, make sure to get on the edge of your seat. Regardless, make sure that this is the time where you like and subscribe. Season 13. While season 12 is still amidst production, it is more than likely that the series will be picked up for at least another season. The number 13 is considered to be very unlucky in American culture, however, and fans have theorized that this will be the show's darkest and most disturbing season yet. Although nothing's been confirmed, it's likely that fans should anticipate season 13 to be the return of the drop-off, the dirty bubble, and sexual innuendos. Harold the Womanizer Throughout the show's run, the background character Harold is often seen in the presence of many a different female fish, all of them pearls of the deep. While most theorize Harold to be a player or even an adulterer, I've always had my own theory that he could be a deep sea prostitute. There's nothing wrong with sex work, and Bikini Bottom is a thriving ecosystem. Merged Souls The season 4 episode, Squid Bob Tentacle Pants, has always been ripe with fan theories, specifically the one revolving around the ending where all the show's main cast is shown grotesquely merged together. While their bodies are never physically combined in future episodes, it is thought that their souls may still be bound. There is little evidence of this, but the sick thought makes me smile. Black Trick Civil War the animation error seen in the season 11 episode, A Chummy Tumble, has caused somewhat of a civil war in the fandom. The error in question depicts Patrick miscolored in the background of a random shot. Fans constantly argue over whether to call this character Black Trick, Negapat, and Shadow Star. Personally, I will not be picking a side in this video to avoid the hatred in the comments. Naked Parodies Let's just say that even Spongebob, a children's show, is not safe from parodies in the adult film business. I'm gonna keep this one brief, but if you're curious, Google SpongeNob SquareNuts on a school computer with safe search turned off. Drugs. If you've seen this iceberg chart posted prior, you'll notice drugs is not on any of them. I added this here just to remind my viewers to steer clear of drug abuse. I've lost many close friends to the cruel hands of evil drugs. Remember. Only a sober sponge can soak up puddles. So, this wraps up our dive under the SpongeBob iceberg. I hope you found my knowledge of this cartoon to be both expansive and educational. I will not be making another video like this because I actually have a minor fear of arctic tundra environments, but hopefully you enjoyed the video nonetheless. If you need me, I'll be at the sunny coastline trying to find a sandy cheeks of my own. <laughs>